This is RedbirdHD.TV. I'm John Tork, joined by Illinois State head men's basketball coach Dan Moeller, who's entering his third season. Coach, thanks for joining us and taking some time this summer to chat some Redbird hoops. And it almost always is basketball season. Summer workouts are underway, release the schedule. So there is a lot to talk about for the 2014-15 season. If you could just talk about the state of the program and the state of Illinois State basketball. Well, I'm excited about where we're at, number one, because of our players and our staff. Um, a couple of new staff members, and they've been a terrific addition already. Um, some new players in, some old players, which this is the first time going into summer because my first year I was a new coach. Last year we had a brand new team, basically. So to have a number of returners has been nice. Like where our schedule's at. Uh, love where my team's at right now. Got a long way to go, but they're working hard. And uh, it's, it's an exciting time to be a part of Redbird basketball right now. Folks usually think a basketball season is starting in November and ending in March, but actually it really lasts much longer than that. Talk about what you and your staff and the team are all up to this time of year in June. Yeah, our year is seasonal, um, and we have about five different seasons. But right now we have camps going on. We also have workouts. Um, started three years ago. We could work out two hours per week with our team on the court. We're also allowed to be with them in the weight room and conditioning. So um, we're getting up bright and early at 6.30 every morning and the uh, team's doing weight workout, conditioning. We have basketball workouts. They play a lot of pickup. Recruiting never stops. Um, so we have some unofficial visits where kids come on campus, maybe for the day, spend some time with us right now. Um, recruiting starts in July. So a couple weeks from now, we'll be on the road most of the month of July while working in our workouts with the team. And of course the team's in summer school right now. Um, so academically the summers are huge for your players because you can get a little bit ahead, uh, take a little lighter load during the season, um, get some classes that, that can really help you progress to graduation. So a lot going on right now and we, we try to stay busy. Last year was a challenge. You had the most inexperienced team in the nation, but the players came together, had some marquee wins, beat number 25 Dayton here at Redbird Arena also beat DePaul and also uh, able to beat Texas A&M, Northwestern. So some key wins, had a pretty good conference schedule, also some bumps in the road along the way. But what would you consider last year to be? If you had to say your takeaway from the 2013-14 season, what would it be? You know, after the year's over, you look back, and I think last year was a growth year for our program and our players. Uh, we were terrific at home after the beginning against two very good teams in Manhattan and Drexel. Of course, Wichita State got us, but other than that, we were, we were very good at home. And we struggled on the road. Um, but I think our players and our program grew a lot. I think our culture that we've tried to set from the day we got here um, continues to grow. But you have to have some consistency with your players with that. And you see it in the workouts right now. Our new players are going to complement what, what, we, what we needed last year and, and what we have coming back. Um, but last year was successful because I think it set us up going into this off season slash summer uh, to have a very, very good season um, this next year. And as we look ahead to next year, a lot of excitement involving all of the newcomers, but two in particular because fans saw them sit out last year, Deontay Hawkins they literally and Mikhail, saw them. Yeah, Mikhail McIntosh. They saw them behind the bench at home games. Now they'll be on the bench in jerseys and on the court. Uh, tell us a little bit about those two young men, what they've gone through having to sit out and maybe how that will help them this year as they actually get to return to the playing court. Well, it will help them in a couple ways. Uh, number one, hopefully a little hungrier. You know, sitting out's tough. Um, but it helped them tremendously because we couldn't do anything with them on the court or even in the weight room, but they could see what we needed and what we wanted as coaches and what to expect. Now, to go through it's different. But it's not like they're brand new players, so that's very nice. Uh, both very physical, athletic, skilled, talented players. Um, had ter terrific academic years last year. And became close with their teammates, which, which also helps. Um, can't want wait to uh, start an official practice with them. Of course, we've been in workouts right now, and they're doing great. And we're excited about our other new, new players also, our other incoming guys. Um, we got a great mix of size, athleticism, skill, shooting. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to be hard to figure out who to play, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think. It's early, but I, I think that's, that's going to be the case. We've got great depth this year, and depth in size and depth on the perimeter. So um, it's, it's going well, and the attitudes are great. McCown and Teddy have been terrific.
that's a good problem to have having it's, it's a little a very bit too good much problem depth. to have yeah <laughs> for, for now yeah <laughs> let's break down the newcomers for mm -hmm. fans uh, who don't know uh, and we'll start with the most recent addition a guy who fans won't get to see on the court during 2014-15 but Nick Banyard a transfer from New Mexico will have two years left starting the following season uh, talk about him a little bit would you yeah Nick is you know six eight and a half probably 220, 225, got a very athletic body and frame, very athletic player uh, from Texas. I actually saw him play in high school, we recruited when I was at Vanderbilt some, and so I knew about him, saw him play. He's going to have a year to sit out next year, and it'll be a great year for him to develop his skill, get his body right, and of course, continue to understand what our culture is. But really excited about Nick being with our program, and he'll help tremendously in practice next year also. Um, he gets here soon, and we cannot wait for him to start. Moving along, Mark Hall, a transfer guard from Eastern Wyoming College. He'll be a redshirt sophomore this year. Talk about Mark, please. Yeah, Mark is from northern suburbs of Chicago and a very under-recruited player, about 6'3". He can play one and two. He's a very good athlete. Um, he's put some weight on, but um, quiet kid, tremendous worker, um, great student, great kid. And I'm, I'm really excited about Mark's future. Um, He's going to continue to develop. He, again, the weight's going to be a big thing for him, putting some weight on. But he, he's got some, some skills. He, he's, going to, he's going to help us win some games while he's here. Justin McLeod is next up on the list, uh, all the way from Bismarck State College in North Dakota. He'll be a junior and a very good shooter, right? Yeah, Justin's a big-time shooter. He's got very good size, 6'4". He's a good athlete. I mean, he, he's, a, he, he's a quarterback football team, basketball, played baseball, um, can do a little bit of everything but his shooting ability sets him apart. Um, elevates on the shot, shoots a high percentage, can do some stuff with the ball off the dribble. Um, needs to put a little weight on too, as most new players do. But Justin's going to help us stretch the court. But that's not the only thing that Justin can do. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he'll continue to show us you know, through, as the workouts continue to go. And continuing to add some size to the roster, Will Ransom, uh, forward from Daytona State College. He'll also be a junior. And uh, Will, what, what do you see out of him? Yeah, Will, 6'8", about 240 right now, and really not, not lifted weights too much in his life, so he'll probably put a little more weight on. Huge motor, great rebounder, uh, tenacious competitor. And uh, Will gets it done on the defensive end and on the boards. Has enough offensive skill that will continue to improve, but his presence, his motor, his attitude helps any team. And, and he was the perfect guy for us. He can play both the four and the five because um, he can really move his feet and gives us kind of some toughness on our team, which we have some, but he helps us. And finally, Devon Akun Purcell, transfer guard from Eastern Oklahoma State College, will be a junior this season. Talk about him, if you will. Yeah, Devon's a 6'5 wing, which gives us some size on the perimeter. Uh, very good athlete, shoots it at a high percentage, kind of just an all-around player, can do some stuff with the ball off the dribble. Uh, he's a good passer, good defender, but his size on the perimeter is the thing that well, sets us apart from last year. Although we got Mikhail plays the three, we got some guys with size on the perimeter yeah. now, but um, can play a couple different positions and a, and a really talented offensive player um, who's got some very good leadership qualities too early uh, since he's been here. When you talk about leadership, last year's team was seniorless. Mm -hmm. This year you have three t uh, seniors Bobby Hunter, Deshaun Knight, and John Jones. Talk about the advantage of having three quality seniors who have been around the program, know the culture and the expectations, and what you expect out of those senior leaders this year. Well, I expect them to have great individual years and to, to help us instill what we want as coaches want uh, throughout the program. Um, you know, Bobby and Deshaun were with us last year. John Jones has been with us for two years, with me for two years. They're, both phys they're all physical. Uh, they played in big games. And whether they're going to be our main leaders on the team or not, I don't know, because uh, we do have some underclassmen and some other guys with some great leadership abilities. But um, those guys are talented players. They're tough. Uh, they're physical. And usually, seniors have great seasons because you have that sense of urgency. And, and so hopefully we get that out of them. And I think we will because even now, when you say it to them, hey, it's your last year, they all look at you like, don't, don't say that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. So that's, the, that's one of the best things about seniors is that sense of urgency and understanding uh, that the team is the most important thing and, and we got to do everything we can to win games. We talked about the new players, also have a couple of new additions to your coaching staff, uh, Dean Oliver and Mitch Gilfillan. Uh, just talk about those two if you would and what they bring to Redbird basketball. 
Yeah, and I've said it, I couldn't be more excited about those two. Number one, incredibly high character guys, integrity, uh, good family men, um, care about the players as people first. Uh, they both know basketball, both played at a high level, and, and so they know the game, great work ethic, uh, different in their, their career paths, of course. Dean played professionally for nine years, I believe, NBA for two, overseas for seven more. Great experience for our guards, point guard mentality, and can really help our players on the court with skill, but also the mentality of it. And then Mitch, uh, you know, a local guy who uh, brings energy every day, of course, played at Lehigh, and, completely overqualified for the position with his law degree <laughs> um, but he, he's he's been awesome he, he's been absolutely terrific with our players and everything that he's supposed to be doing so we're happy them and their families are joining our, our, our family here at Illinois State. Let's talk a little bit about scheduling that was something from the very beginning you've put as a top priority is scheduling quality non-conference opponents that continues this year. The schedule was released uh, last month, and uh, among some of the top opponents that Redbird fans can come and see here, VCU, that's a huge game at, at Redbird Arena. DePaul, many others, quality uh, tournament as well as the Redbirds are going to the Paradise Jam. Just talk about the non-conference schedule and how that will prepare the 2014-15 team for the Missouri Valley Conference. Yeah, I'm excited about it. You know, scheduling is a hard thing, as everybody knows, and it's been talked about <laughs> in depth, uh, because you have to fit dates, you have to fit opponents, where you play. Uh, it's kind of a puzzle you have to put together. And we've got a great schedule of home teams, uh, road teams, and also our tournament that's going to challenge our team. And it's going to challenge us early with Utah State coming in as our first game. We head straight to the Virgin Islands where you don't know who you'll play after the first game, but the potential to play three extremely good opponents. Um, come home, you got, as you said, VCU coming in early. We're at DePaul, we're at Murray State, at UAB. and so. We'll be tested. Um, I think we'll play a lot of different styles, which is important to me. Uh, obviously, very good coaches. And, you know, we want our fans to be excited about who we're playing. Uh, we want to have an unbelievable atmosphere here, um, increase our attendance. Students are so important to us, and, and have them be excited who we're playing, and also help our, our team prepare, as you said, for the conference, which, of course, our goal is to win the Missouri Valley Conference this year. So, Excited about our schedule. It takes a lot of hard work, and um, it's it ended well. So I'm happy where we're at with it. Obviously, it's very early, but uh, what can Redbird fans expect to see out of the 2014-15 Illinois State men's basketball team? You know, I, I hope they can always see a few things. Number one, a team that plays with great energy and toughness. You know, plays for each other, represents our fans, our alum, our student body with pride. You know, the way we carry ourselves. Um, one thing we will see this year. Uh, not only different from last year, but honestly, I think different from a long time here at Illinois State is our size and athleticism. Uh, we could very easily have some very, very physical, tall, athletic wings on the court with our bigs. We could go small. Um, we'll always try to play fast and you know, play together. So that toughness that it takes to win championships, that, that energy level and passion for the game that I think fans saw last year at home, uh, we'll continue, and we'll just, you know, the, the faces and the sizes will change a little bit this year, and, and hopefully the results on the road. But um, I, I can't say it enough. I could not be more excited about where our program is right now and, and the players we have in it. And finally, again, it's very early, but are there any goals set? At what point do you start setting goals and, and really starting to gear up for this 2014-15 season? Our goal is to get better every day, be great teammates every day. Um, succeed in the classroom, have great success there. Uh, just build your your just will to win, will to compete, um, your toughness level, and and so you know you get in the summer. Those are things that are important. Our, our goal right now is to improve each player skill wise. Um, players help you win games. Better players help you win more games. So no real goals for our team this year other than to have the best summer we can have and to come together as a team every day. Um, every time we step on the court together. Coach, best of luck to you this season. Thank you, John. That's the head coach of the Redbirds, Dan Muller, entering his third season. And this is Illinois State Basketball here on Redbird HD.TV.